this section is called The Omen and the Rule by Armando Torres. Talks with Carlos Castaneda. The Omen. One time after giving a talk in the private dining room of a restaurant where he invited all of us to dine, Carlos asked me to come with him to another place. Minutes later, we both left, while the others were still in the middle of a lively conversation. On the way, we had to cross a large avenue to gel ahead of the cars. I ran towards a triangular traffic island in the middle of the street, believing that Carlos was right behind me. But when I got there, I realized that he was still waiting on the other side. Then something unexpected happened. A great gust of wind came rushing down the avenue, so strong that I had to hold on to the metal post of the traffic sign. Before I had time to protect myself, a cloud of dust got into my eyes and my throat, making me cough and leaving me blind for a moment. When I recovered, Carlos was at my side, looking at me with a radiantly happy face. He patted my back and made a very strange comment. I know what to do with you. I looked questioningly at him and he explained, that was the same wind, it is after you. His words made me remember the moment we met when an autumn wind had forced us to hastily close the windows of the room where a group of friends were waiting for him. On that occasion, you saw it as a strong wind, but I knew that it was a spirit making whirls over your head. It was a sign, and now I know why it pointed you out. I asked him to explain this enigmatic statement, but his answer was even more obscure. I am here to ascertain information. It is an aspect of the teachings that concerns me so deeply that I can't explain it to others. It should be said through a messenger. While I was watching how the spirit danced with you on the edge of the avenue, I knew that the messenger is you. I insisted he must tell me more, but he said that this was neither the time nor the appropriate place. Sometime later, we were walking to Almeida Park near the Palace of Fine Arts. He signaled to me that we should sit down on a bench, miraculously empty on one side of the square. The bench was made of wrought iron, its location right in front of the main door of an old church built from blocks of red and black lava. It had the virtue of slightly blocking my internal dialogue, which transported me to an oasis of serenity amid the bustle of cars and people passing by. As it turned out, Carlos had foreseen this impact and its didactic function. He commented that it was Don Juan's favorite bench, when I found, which I found very moving. Rubbing his hands together, he assured me that it was time to get to the point. Do you know what the rule is, he asked. Although I had read something about it in one of his books, I had not understood much, so I shook my head no. He went on. It's the name that the seers have given the guide of a party of sorcerers, a kind of navigational chart, or a sample book of a warrior's assignments and duties within the framework of his practices. After exhaustive verifications, the sorcerers of ancient Mexico came to the conclusion that just as all live beings possess a defined biological pattern which allows reproducing and evolving, we also have an energy pattern responsible for our development as luminous beings. The mold of a species extracts its energy from the rule. The rule is a kind of womb. It contains an evolutionary plan for every living being, not only on Earth, but also in any corner of the universe where there is awareness. Nobody can break away from it. The most we can do is ignore that it exists, in which case we won't reach the stage where we can be what we truly are, live mass in the service of a purpose that we don't understand. Said in sorcerer's terms, the rule is the diagram of the eagle's commands, an equation which correlates the effectiveness of actions with the saving of energy. In the practical sphere, such a combination cannot produce anything but a warrior. The rule is complete and covers all facets of the warrior's way. It describes how a Nagual party is created and nurtured, how generations are connected to form a lineage, and it guides them towards freedom. But 
In order to use it as a key to power, we have to verify it for ourselves. How can you verify it, I asked. The rule is self-evident to the sorcerer who sees. For a beginner like you, the best way of attesting its functionality consists in detecting its intrusion in the course of your life. The origin of the rule. I asked him how man had come to this contact with this matrix, he replied. It has always existed, however, seers are its discoverers and guardians. The rule is the origin of the universal order. Its operation and purpose are ignored, not because they are not known, but because they are not understood. Hundreds of generations of sorcerers gave their lives in their zeal to eludicate it and to develop practical proposals for every one of its conceptual units. In the beginning, no man attempted to catch a glimpse of this structure because nobody knew it was there. As the seers of old Mexico came into contact with other aware entities, on this earth, much older and more experienced than the seers themselves, they began acquiring portions of the rule. One day, they saw that all those portions fit into each other like a puzzle. That day, they discovered what they called the map, and the lineage of the seers of antiquity began. Through their seeing, they verified each portion related to dreaming. They tested every combination, determining their effects on awareness. They organized exercises of dreaming on seven, seven levels of increasing depth, and they penetrated the innermost twists and turns of the universe. Little by little, they developed the pattern for the Nawal party, a structure in the shape of an extremely stable pyramid, capable of expressing the designs of power with transparent clarity. But there was one thing the ancients didn't verify, the rule for the stalkers. They viewed stalking as a latent possibility which was not worthwhile to explore it in practice. Why? I asked. Because in an era where being a sorcerer meant being at the top of the social scale, stalking as an art had no purpose. It would have been poor it would have been a poor investment. But when the modality of time changed, that line of reasoning brought the old seers almost to the edge of extinction. It was not until the appearance of the Toltecs that the other great portion of the rule revealed its extraordinary content. Lineages who were able to apply it were the only ones who survived. The rest were dissolved and got lost in the vortex which signified the fall of the old seer's regime. The incorporation of stocking determined the birth of the new seers. With them, the rule of the Nawal was completely eludicated. When did that happen? The period of the new seers began about 5,000 years ago and reached its peak in the time of Tula. Through stalking, the fundamental contribution of those warriors to sorcery was the notion of impeccability.